Hi everyone, welcome to part 5 of the series on the game Pillsbury vs. Lasker. Really one of the most famous chess games of all time. So, last video we talked about how rook to e1 would have helped Pillsbury, but instead he played rook to d1. So now we have to figure out what should black do in response to rook d1. It's another key moment in the game. Pause your video, try to find the best idea. This is not easy. So give yourself time. All right, let's take a look. And by the way, I've already found out that people should not eat dog food. So I don't really know what else to, to look up. Maybe can people eat? What other kind of food is there that like, because you know dog food sometimes it looks really good. Maybe dog treats. I'll look that up later. Anyway, so black to move in this position. We have exactly one winning move, if I'm not mistaken. And that move is queen c6. Now in the game, black played rook to c3. Queen c6 has an immediate threat of rook c1, king b2, and then queen c3 checkmate. So like if random move, if rook takes rook, queen c1 is mate, and this is checkmate. So what does white do here? Well, it looks like white can just go king b1, and it's very hard to see how black continues the attack. And therefore, the line doesn't look that valuable. The key here, though, and this is the tough move to see in the variation. Queen c6 is not that tough. What's tough is to see what you do next. This bishop, which has been so well placed the whole game, eyeing the king on a1, you'd never think there'd be any reason to move it away. But bishop g5 is a tremendously strong move. The problem for white is the rook can't really move because rook c1 will lead to checkmate now. And so after bishop g5, white's position is just horrible. He can't move the rook anywhere, and we're just going to take it next move with a huge attack on the king. If I'm not mistaken, black is either much better or winning here. I'm going to go check that just to just because I'm curious. Yeah, it just says a clear clear advantage, almost winning for black. Because if we ever get material equality, look how wide open this king is. These pawns are weak. Everything's pretty bad for white here. Uh, you may have been tempted by the move queen c5. But again, you know, because it does, it does have it so that white can Black is attacking the d-pawn. On the, on the flip side, it allows the move queen e8 check. And after king e h7, it allows the move queen e3, which unfortunately defends the c3 square. So that after rook c1, king to b2. And black actually has no force win here. Um, whereas after queen to c6, there's no really effective way for white to do something like queen to e3. Because if we play a move like queen to f3, which looks like it does the same thing, well now black has ideas like rook c1, king b2, and bishop takes d4. And after rook takes d4, queen c2. So as you can see, like I promised, there's a lot of positions where very precise calculation is needed. And I think this game, for that reason, is a really great one to show to students, especially if they're rated like 1800 or above. Uh, just because there's so many concrete moments where you just have to make the right decision, where you lose or the result of the game totally changes. So again, the key idea, queen c6, with the idea of bishop to g5. Very tough to see. Lasker was not able to find it, and he played the move rook to c3, which was not best. Uh, we will look at the rest of the game in the next two videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.